Hi, AT from CNC at Home. I have a router project. It's been a long time since we had the uh, 3018 Pro running, so I got a project to do on there, and hopefully it'll be uh, entertaining. Basically, um, at my mom's church, they have a bunch of stained glass windows. The church building has moved, and well, okay, the building hasn't moved. The church has moved to a new building, but they brought the stained glass with them. They brought the pipe organ and a bunch of other things to the new building. And they've kind of lost their meaning, these stained glass windows. There used to be a pamphlet available at the old church that talked about these six main stained glass windows and what the artist's uh, intention was, what they were supposed to represent. And what we're trying to do is not set up a memorial for my dad, but basically in honor of him, because he loved those stained glass windows, was to get some plaques to put next to each one of the windows to uh, basically show, have the explanation of what each one was uh, representing. And it's been a committee working with the church. So, a very slow process. We're still dealing with font types, font size, size of the plaque, material, of like those kinds of things. What I'm doing is making just a mock-up so that they have something they can get in their hands to see this is too small, this is too big, the font's great, the font's not great, it's too big, too small, whatever. But something physical they can have in their hands mocking up what we're intending to do and go from there. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of craft plywood, just stuff to pick up at the, at the local store. It's, uh, this one is the six millimeter thick, so it's a little bit beefier of a piece, and I've painted it. Now, this has several coats on it. The first thing I did was I just I prepped the surface, I sanded to make sure it was nice and smooth once it was cut to side, and then I sprayed it with a gray primer. Once that was set up, then I put on a couple coats of this silver paint. And then on top of the silver paint, I put a couple coats of a water-based polyurethane. It was a, a spray-on kind of thing. Once all those layers were on, this is ready to go in. This is about the color they're looking for. They want it to match the the frames around the windows at the new church, uh, which I believe are aluminum. I'm not sure. I haven't really been there to, to look at them recently, but I know they're kind of about this color. So this is the blank. And what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the uh, explanations for one of the stained glass windows, make a mock-up, and have something that they can put in their hands. So hopefully this will be entertaining. Um, I will go over to the uh, to the router and the computer by the router. We'll kind of talk about the software side of it just a little bit, and uh, we'll get this cut out. Remember to give this video a thumbs up. Let's go over to the router. Here I've opened up my application called F Engrave, and we will pull in our image that we created in Microsoft Word of all places, and here's the text. Everything looks good, so let's make a few setting changes here. First of all, we want to get it the right size. The way that this works is we set the height, and I know the height of this is going to be 82.55, so I key that in. That will then adjust the width accordingly, it's keeping the same aspect ratio. I also want to change my feed rate to 400 millimeters per minute. I could probably even go faster, but we're going to be safe. And let's go into the VCarve settings. I want to make sure that I'm using a V-bit, and this one is going to be a 90-degree V-bit. The uh, diameter size is correct, so let's go ahead and have it calculate its uh, tool paths. Once this is done, everything that it's going to cut will turn black. Anything that's missing will show a little gap. If all goes well, there will be no gaps. 
This looks really good. We can go ahead and close the VCarve settings and we should be ready to save this. We'll just go over here and we'll export the G code. Because my machine has the bigger motor on it, I did add to the top of this G code the ramp up code for that so it starts out at 40% and then works its way up to 100. Here in my G code sender, we'll go ahead and attach to the router and we will run a homing sequence to make sure that the machine is uh, properly oriented. So we'll click on the H here and then that will first do the Z axis real quickly there because it was close to the, the limit switch and then it'll do the X, Y zeroing. I really don't need to do the zeroing because I'm going to change my zero point anyway once I get my material on here. So I'm going to bring the table back in the Y direction so that it's out front and I can put my material on it fairly easily. I'll just get this aligned with my waste board and then throw four clamps on it. This thin piece of material I can use these simple clamps and that works well. It's secure, so the next thing will be to get my tool changed, actually. Um, I have a two-flute straight-cut bit on here, and I need to switch that out with my 90-degree V-bit. So we'll just loosen up the collet nut, and we can pull that tool out. And I'll just uh, grab the other tool. I have it over on the side here, and a little magnet holds it in place. I'll put the other tool over there as well, just snap that in. And we'll put this 90 degree V-bit into place and tighten up the collet nut. Once the tool is secure, the next step will be to do our Z-zeroing. And for that, I will bring over my touchpad. The touchpad I have uh, plugged in over my emergency stop button. I have a an jack over there where I can plug it in. An alligator clip goes on the tool. I will manually bring the Z down quite a bit. I can do that more quickly. The last little bit when I run my macro will go fairly slowly until it touches that touchpad. Once that electrical connection is made, then it uh, automatically will adjust for the material height. It subtracts out the size of the touchpad itself. Easy as that. We're zeroed with the surface of our material. I'm going to move over to where I want my zero to be for this particular carving. And it's about over here somewhere. So as I get close, I will change the movement to uh, finer increments. I'll bring the tool down. I do have a mark on the material that I'm aiming for. I don't believe we can actually see that in the video, but in real life I could see it and I was able to get the tool down to where that mark is within a close enough parameter. This is a, a mock-up as we talked about, so it doesn't need to be exact. But I want it to be close. I want it to look nice. Now that we have our zeros set, I come back to the uh, G-code sending. I open up the code that we generated from F-Engrave, click on the visualization, and we can see the toolpath of what it's going to do. The light blue is actual tool up and movement, and then uh, the white area is what it's going to be engraving. We're all set. Let's go ahead and send it. Go ahead and speed this up a little bit, or a lot bit actually, so this doesn't take too long to do. This whole cut took just under 40 minutes. Uh, at the end, it'll show the time. It may have been actually 36 minutes in some. So 
So it's a little faster than what the uh, sending software said that it would take. Get a quick vacuum of some of the dust there. I'll do that again once the cutting is done. I'm always impressed with how well this cuts. I like the, uh, the way that the V-carve or the V-bit does its carving and gives me the little serifs on the font there. Those are the little extra things on the ends of the letters. Okay, the cutting's done. Quick go in and vacuum off some of that uh, dust. And we can take a closer look at the carving. If it looks good, we'll take it out to the garage and apply the stain to darken up where we carve. All right, there it was 37 minutes, 25 seconds. We'll click OK on that, and the job is done. Out in the garage, I have my dark stain I'm just going to apply with a rag. It's an old sock. That is somewhat obvious. Anyway, I work the stain down into where I carved, and if all goes well, because of the poly coat that I put on top of the paint, I should be able to clean the stain off the surface somewhat easily. Um, I don't uh, need it to sit too long. It's, it's darkened up pretty well, and I'm able to wipe most of this off. I did use a little lacquer thinner on top here to clean off the last little bits of that to get it all nice and cleaned up. I did come back after this and clean up a few of those smudges. All in all, it looks really good. Nice and dark wording. Now that the cleaning process is done, this turned out pretty well. We'll see if we can get that framed up nicely. So for a mock-up, it turned out pretty well. It has the kind of the aluminum look to it, even though it's just wood. And it has one of the sayings on it, again, font, size, style, whatever. That can be changed easily enough. This will give them something they can have in their hand. They can hold it up, put it on the wall, go, ooh, that's too small, or ooh, well, that's bigger than I thought it would be, you know. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's fun getting back to the router. It's been a while. This is a good project. Remember to subscribe and like to this video. That helps the YouTube analytics and helps the channel kind of bubble up to the top and we get more viewers. And I hope you enjoy doing your CNC at home projects. Oops.